have um, uh, um, uh, Christina Vosco-Glue uh, from Slash Data who will share for 20 minutes. Uh, we'll keep this full 20 minutes even if we're four minutes late uh, about the research uh, they're, they're doing on, let's say, the developer uh, in the banking, finance, and and and, uh, and other uh, segment. Are, are we able to have Christina on stage? Yeah, Christina. Hello. Hi, Wendy. How are well. you? Fine, how are you? Fine, very good. I invite you to share your uh, slides with us and we'll go for a full 20 minute uh, presentation. Yeah, I hope you can see them. There we go. Perfect, thank you. Thank you. Right, so hey everyone. Um, I'm here to show you some hard data really uh, on what technologies are being adopted in the finance and banking sectors. So before I do that, uh, I think you really need to understand where uh, this data is coming from. Um, so first of all, who we are, uh, we are Slash Data, we help the world understand developers. And we do that by serving developers annually, we reach more than 30,000. Um, and based on this data that we collect, uh, we help uh, developer facing organizations understand who developers are, um, what they buy, so what technologies, what tools they prefer and where they're going next in terms of emerging technologies and trends. Oops, sorry. Um, so this is how we collect our data. So uh, this is where this comes from, we're gonna see. Um, we run two survey waves annually. Um, we've done that 21 times already. Uh, each time we reach developers across the globe, so more than 150 countries. Um, we use more than 80 partners um, to, uh, to reach all those developers. It's not the same AD every time. We want to make sure that we have a representative sample that we don't just uh, follow a specific panel through time and therefore focus on the opinions of a very specific group of people, but rather reach out afresh each time to um, capture the views of everyone. So we nearly get 20,000 uh, developers every time in our survey, so unique uh, 30,000 annually. Uh, we cover all these 11 development areas that you see here on, on the left. Um, and um, we do that every time. So we include those every time because we know that developers are typically active in more than one of those simultaneously end-to-end. Uh, -end. So to understand fully what they're doing and the synergies between tools, we have to uh, look at all of those. Okay, and with that out of the way, this is our main agenda for today. Uh, cloud technologies adoption, so which cloud technologies are being adopted in the sector. Uh, cloudification, there's uh, quite a lot of uh, discussion uh, around that. So uh, with some hard data, is it really happening um, and why, the reasons. DevOps, whether DevOps is being adopted and emerging technologies, so which are of higher interest. Um, so first of all, cloud technologies adoption. Um, we ask developers, these are not just backend developers, this is all developers out there, professionals, and we ask them, where do they store the data? And these are the answers, and these are split between financial, so professionals in the financial services and banking sector, uh, as compared to others, which is the light blue. Um, and there are a few things to note here. First of all, of course, on-premise and private cloud are at the top. Um, and um, they're, it, it's the, the most important in this sector. It's also, of course, still uh, very high in other sectors as well, but it's really sticking out for this sector in particular as it makes sense. It also makes sense to have uh, lower reliance on local device uh, resources. But what is really interesting is to see public cloud uh, being more broadly used in the sector uh, versus other. And it may sound counterintuitive, but uh, you have to think of what is being stored where. So if you notice, all of those dark blues are bigger, which means that the financial sector is using multiple storage places, multiple ways to store data, which means the right data at the right place. Therefore, public cloud in this case is most likely used for not that sensitive data, but we'll see further down another aspect of that. Now, the financial sector is really big, and we tend to, and this is the average overall picture, right? The real value is in cutting this down into pieces and understanding 
who does what in terms of company sizes, exactly what they're working on, uh, and so on. Um, and we tend to have in mind for the sector the really big guys, uh, so they're the huge banks and so on, but uh, they're also little folks uh, from just freelance con contractors that will just be building ML models perhaps uh, to predict or building some trends or something, small startups with an API all the way over to the really huge organizations. So here I'm showing you how the previous picture, so usage of clouds um, and other storage uh, is uh, changes with company uh, size, right? And of course, private cloud and on-premise uh, is used more, so it goes up with company size, is used more by the large orgs, and public cloud goes down. However, it does not go steeply down. It's the purple line here, public cloud, right? So there's, a, there's an inflection point here somewhere for medium size uh, after which it really goes down, but then it flattens out, which strengthens the argument that it is being used for very specific reasons. Um, and we have, it's not of course the most popular, but it is being used for several reasons. Now APIs uh, are used more by the medium size um, uh, companies to store data and it does go down. So there's a bit of thinking there and more digging into to understand exactly uh, why and what can be done. Uh, last thing here is that hybrid cloud is, well, the exception here at the beginning, perhaps really small guys, but uh, otherwise it's really flat, which means that it's equally important across the sector. So you can use a hybrid model uh, in several projects. So again, um, this is interesting, uh, both of course, that to show you that you have to keep in mind not the finance sales sector in, as a whole, because we have by now a very diverse set of teams and, and people and companies in there. And to show you that it does vary uh, with company size, among other things, like what they're working on. But for today, I'm just showing you company uh, size as an example here. Now, uh, we also then asked, this time, backend developers, professional backend developers, what technologies they use in backend development. Um, and again, this is a split um, and the comparison between financial services and all other industries. Um, and again, there are a few things to note here. First of all, uh, containers is the most popular uh, technology currently in backend anyway, uh, but even more so in the financial sector. So 70% are using containers and that also goes with also look, far higher, far um, bigger usage of container uh, orchestration tools. Um, and of course there are legacy enterprise systems. Um, <clears throat> as Will said earlier, it's not so easy to get rid of them so easily. Uh, and uh, virtual machine uh, infrastructure as service or IaaS for short. So these are the, the ones that stick out, these four that are being used more in financial services in the backend development. However, again, uh, we note that they tend to use more of pretty much everything, not everything, but uh, the significant difference for, for several of these, um, which means again that there, there's a diversification of technologies used uh, for backend development in particular. So they're, they know how to use different technologies, the right technology for the right job, basically. This is what this is uh, saying. Now, as to moving to the cloud, <clears throat> excuse me, the question is whether it is happening in the financial sector as well. Um, and we asked them, of course, that question, have you uh, migrated any apps that previously ran on premise or only locally? And if so, how many? Well, the first thing is, first of all, uh, cloudification is as relevant um, in the financial sector as it is elsewhere. So that's what the developers say here. So relevant to around 60% uh, of uh, companies or developers out there in the sector. And so that's the one thing, it is relevant, it is happening at the same pace as it's happening elsewhere. And the other is that when it's happening, it's more likely, we see here on the far right, uh, it's more likely um, developers in this sector to be uh, migrating multiple apps at a time rather than um, what's happening as compared to what's happening in other uh, industries. So 70% as you see are uh, 
migrating more than four apps, which is an indication of uh, the diversity and the number of applications, again, that developers in this sector are running. Um, but why move to the cloud? So uh, why migrate? Uh, we asked that question as well. We asked actually more reasons than what you can see here. Well, there's also things like reducing IT costs, for example. But I'm here, I'm, I'm highlighting the ones that um, are more interesting for this sector. So first of all, you can see the top two here, and by far more interesting in this sector than in others, uh, is to, as a reason to, to migrate, is to improve the scalability and performance or to improve reliability. Um, so these are very important uh, in this group. And also uh, to do something about that outdated technology stack, right, finally. Uh, so it is happening. And these are the reasons that are more uh, interesting, more um, important in this sector than in others. It's not about attracting customers, obviously, in this case. So it's these three. Now, the other thing that is interesting here is security, right? Um, so security as a reason to migrate rather than not. A reason to migrate to the cloud because of security. So it may sound, again, odd. Um, and it may be that so because, again, we all have perhaps uh, in mind um, the, the big companies and the huge uh, organizations, financial orgs in the, in the uh, sector. However, remember, we're talking also about the small guys and the small companies that um, are building an API, for example. And perhaps this is a, a case of externalizing risk rather than having something locally that is so-and-so in terms of security. So for these uh, companies, it's they are actually migrating to the cloud for security purposes. Um, again, we would need, um, we, we can with our data dig deeper and understand exactly who is saying that versus not. So, uh, but it's interesting to see again, there, there's a set of reasons here that are more important to uh, the sector, while others that I have not included, such as reducing costs, is equally important as anywhere else. Um, moving on to uh, DevOps. Um, so DevOps is also uh, being uh, adopted and uh, very widely so in the sector. Uh, as you can see, so we asked developers in which DevOps activities they are uh, involved. And they are involved, again, it's a comparison of financial versus everyone else in the professional world. Um, you can see that there's a broad really usage. It's higher across the board, especially a big, really big difference for uh, CI and CD, continuous integration and deployment, which means that um, the sector is, is getting into uh, the pains of actually building streamlined software delivery uh, processes. Um, perhaps an attempt to remain nimble in a uh, highly regulated environment. So this also agrees with what we saw earlier, using multiple technologies, storing the right data at the right place, and so on. So uh, there is um, overall uh, a trend to um, increase efficiency by taking advantage of the cloud. So the, the smaller companies, even to move to the cloud, even for security, even for privacy reason, privacy was also listed there, and also to use DevOps to streamline deliveries. Now, up to here, it's what is happening, um, but it's also interesting to see um, where they're going next. So we asked developers in our survey, um, you know, what uh, they, they consider um, as the next emerging tech which ones they are currently working on, learning about, or simply interested in, but not doing anything actively about it. We've asked many of those. So here I'm highlighting the ones that are uh, more important, um, but that are more, in more interest in this sector rather than in others. So, okay, blockchain cryptocurrencies, of course, is top. It is top for all sectors. Uh, it's slightly higher, not any, Huge difference, but I'm listing it here. But I think what is more interesting to see is that um, it's blockchain applications other than cryptocurrency that have caught the eye of the sector more than uh, others. 
So, uh, and it makes sense because uh, obviously they're experimenting now or even using um, blockchain uh, to see how they can improve, you know, secure uh, transactions, transparency, flexibility. These are all things that can be achieved through blockchain. And obviously what we see here is that developers um, are trying and are experimenting uh, with that technology. Then we have biometrics for ID verification, a very slight difference there, but it exists. Um, again, it has to do with uh, security and uh, transactions and so on. So overall, they're focusing on things that are the most relevant to their sector. They're not so much looking left and right for other things. Um, and it's again the theme of uh, security, right? And flexibility and both uh, ID verification here and uh, other blockchain um, hint in that direction. While there are other, um, there are other um, technologies that are interesting to uh, other developers that uh, are not that interesting to them. So just listing here a few, the ones that are uh, that have the biggest difference as compared to others. So 5G is of a lot of interest to other developers, other professional developers, mind you. We're not talking about hobbies here. Um, and it's not that interesting in that uh, in uh, the financial and banking sector, um, nor other more exotic stuff like uh, body computer interface, for example, um, or mini apps that are very popular these days, um, or even robotics computer vision. They are uh, of course, um, interesting to a good part. So one in four is looking into computer vision. However, it's less so, it's less interesting here than uh, in other industries. And so that was it for me, just to recap um, technologies used in the sector, public and hybrid clouds and third party APIs um, are more popular in the financial sector than elsewhere as a means of storing data. While, of course, private cloud and on-premise remain at the top, you have to keep in mind who you're talking about and segment really your uh, audience here because large orgs do things different than the really small companies or even freelance uh, consultants uh, in the space. Um, and we saw that multiple solutions are being used, multiple clouds, types of clouds. It's a matter of storing the more um, the right data in the right place. Um, so perhaps the more sensitive goes on premise, the less sensitive goes public cloud and so on. Uh, we also saw that the professionals in this sector use multiple backend technologies, uh, and especially containers, container orchestration tools, IaaS and legacy enterprise systems are used far more in this sector than in others. Again, multiple implies that they're uh, trying to increase efficiency and they're using uh, multiple tools to do so. We saw that cloudification is as relevant in the financial services as it is elsewhere. 60% of developers say it is relevant to them. Um, and they're more likely in the sector to be cloudifying multiple apps at a time. Uh, the reason to move to the cloud, um, there, there are multiple reasons um, and uh, improving scalability performance or improving reliability. And also the problem of the outdated technology stack uh, are uh, the key reasons in this sector to move to the cloud. And actually security is also a reason for cloudification rather than against it. And it is as important here as it is in other sectors. Uh, in, in ranks among the top five, it's actually fourth. Um, <clears throat> DevOps are also widely adopted uh, by financial institutions, um, which implies that Yet again, as we saw with multiple technologies used uh, earlier, that they have adopted a streamlined delivery process to remain nimble in a highly regulated environment. And last but not least um, um, about emerging technologies, it's blockchain other than cryptocurrencies that is of higher interest to developers in this sector rather than others, while other technologies that are popular elsewhere, such as 5G, is not that interesting to them. So that was from me. Um, we have a book that you can get at a discount uh, at our booth. Uh, it's about um, DevRel and uh, 17 industry leading uh, companies uh, have authored it and sharing their experience. So feel free to go there and get a free um, a discounted copy. Thank you.
Thank you very much, uh, Christina. We're, we're uh, uh, at exactly the, uh, the 20 minutes. Um, maybe one, one really quick comment, like can company today in the EPI economy uh, can navigate without understanding developers? No, I don't think so, because um, there, there are so many different needs and wants, uh, just the focusing on, and of course, it's a matter of competition, right? As in any other market to attract your audience, you have to understand their needs, their wants, and it's not as straightforward. Um, you know, you have to do for some agile planning as well to understand um, before making too huge investments and assumptions as to what your market needs. So. Uh, anyone developer facing, we see huge diversity. We have people from all backgrounds trying their hand exactly because the lower uh, the barriers to entry are lower. And so you really need to understand who you're talking to exactly um, and um, you know approach them with the right messaging. Thank you, Christina. Thank you very much. Thank you.